Okay, part three of Unit K review. All right, so let's uh, let's first talk about um, this one. Okay, we have a ring of charge. Charge Q. Um, it's it, this this axis is going right through it. It's got a radius R. It's charged positively Q. You tell me what the voltage is when you're a distance um, A away from that that charge Q. Okay, well, um, we're going to use the fact that the point charge uh, formula, if I just take one little part of this, a little DQ here, the point charge just due to that DQ is... Um, the excuse me the the voltage dv just due to that little dq is going to be um, k now it's acting like a point charge so it's k times dq that little thing the q is part of the whole thing dq is for that little thing and then it's going to be over how far that is from that point so that's going to be r squared plus a squared square root it Okay, now I don't want to know the voltage just of that point. I want it for the whole thing. Um, notice I don't have to worry about um, any directions here because it's not a scalar. This is a scalar quantity. It's not a vector quantity, so that's nice. So um, if I want to know the voltage then of all those, I'm just going to sum up all the k dq all over r squared plus a squared square root it. Could you um, take a moment and see if you can determine what the what's constant and what's the variable in this thing, and um, pull out all the constants. Okay, so the constants are k, r is a constant, and a is a constant. So it's k over r squared plus a squared. Square root it. And when I sum up all the DQs all around the ring, I'll just get Q. So that's the voltage of a ring if you're on the axis. It's K, Q over R squared plus A squared. Square root it. So that's so, that's so nice. It's much nicer than having to do the, the electric field one. Let's try that again. It was so fun. Okay, so this is going to be um, a charge. This is a semicircle, and uh, it's it's a char a linear charge. It's got um, lambda, which is the charge per length. First of all, if you know that that the linear charge de density is lambda, and that's got a radius a, what's the total charge on this thing? Could you see if you could figure out what the total charge on this thing is? Okay, the total charge on this whole thing is going to be, um, since lambda equals charge per length, if I just multiply lambda times length, that gives me the charge. So that would be lambda times, um, the length of this thing is pi times a. 2 pi a is for a circle, so half a circle is pi a. So lambda times length is equal to the charge. Okay. Could you tell me what the voltage is due to this thing? What is the voltage at that point at the center? You want to see if you can do that? Okay. All right, so the way you do this is you break it, you segment it into a little DQ. And um, it turns out that that DQ is um, a distance A away. So the little voltage just due to that one is going to be K times DQ using a point charge, a voltage of a point charge, uh, K DQ all over A, not squared. Okay, well, um, let's see, I want to get the total voltage then. I'm just going to sum up all these K DQs over A. When I do that, um, I can pull the K out and the A out, and I'm just left with K Q over a or if i wanted to i could put this in it's k times lambda pi a that's q all over a 
as a's cancel, and so it's k lambda pi. That's what the potential is at that semicircle. All right. Um, lastly, the electric field, I just would like to remind you that the, the way that the electric field, if you know the voltage, if you have the electric field and you want to get the voltage, then you go this route. You integrate or you take the antiderivative. But if you have the uh, electric, excuse me, you have the voltage and you want to get the electric field, you go this route. You just do the reverse of this. So the electric field is going to be equal to the derivative of V with respect to R. And there's a negative in there. And I told you where that negative came from in class. I won't tell you what it is now. I don't have time right now to... To do that and, and ask you these questions, but there's a negative. So the electric field is equal to the negative dv dr. It's the derivative of v with respect to r. So knowing that, could you tell me if I know that the voltage is two volts per square meter x squared, that's the that's the function. What is the electric field? Go ahead and pause and see if you can figure out what the electric field would be. The magnitude. Okay, so just take um the negative derivative of that so that the electric field is going to be equal to 4 volts over square meters times um, x to the first power and then I got to put a little negative sign there and so that's that's what the electric field is going to be so if I put in like at 1 meter then the one meter will cancel out one of those meters and I'll get, um, it's going to be negative four volts per meter. Yeah, uh, one of the units for electric field is volts per meter. Electric field can be, the units for it are either volts per meter or newtons per coulomb. All right. Hey, could you tell me if this is the function for voltage, with respect to R, that's the that's the for, that tells you how voltage changes with R. Can you tell me at which location the electric field is the greatest? At which location will the intensity of the field be the greatest, just magnitude-wise? Okay. Well, if you um, remember, the electric field is negative dV dr which means it's the slope of a V versus R graph. So I could have asked that same question by saying, which point has uh, here of these has the greatest slope? And the answer is A has the most slope. So A, E A, E at A is greater. It's greater than E at B, which is greater than E at C, which is greater than E at D, E at D, is almost zero. Okay, we have um, a little more time. So I just told you a little while ago that um, a Newton per coulomb was a unit for electric field. And I also told you that a volt per meter was a unit for electric field. Um, could you take volts per meter and change them to Newtons per coulomb? Could you do that? I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so um, a volt per meter is the same thing as um, a volt is a joule per coulomb. So a joule per coulomb, that's what a volt is, all over a meter. Okay, now um, a joule is a newton meter. So come down here and a joule is a newton meter because it's, think of the work equation. Work is measured in in uh, joules but it's also newton meters and so we got newton meters over coulombs divided by meters so that's newtons per coulomb all right well good luck on the test i'll see you tomorrow